Okay. So, uh, I guess I will just get started and, uh, oh, let's be just on time. Um, uh, okay, so we, we're going to talk about, like, um, feature, uh, feature point detection, like, for the next couple of classes. So, uh, we'll talk about, like, how it's kind of detected, like, this time. And, um, so just motivate you guys, like, a little bit, basically, uh, what we have, let, let's just skip this side. Right? So, um, we talk about like, uh, this camera calibration and epipolar geometry in previous two classes, a right? couple classes, I don't remember two or three. And um, so, we, we the, the, the problem is that, okay, we, we mentioned that we, we know the fundamental matrix. So if you remember that like, last time, say we have like two cameras say like, shooting the same place here. So many times, for example, one um, one of the application is trying to build a 3D model of the object. So if you have the, basically the distance between the camera center and you know the correspondence of like this image, I mean, for a particular pixel like on this side, on the uh, left-hand side, I correspond to, let's say, this Im this this pixel, and then like, on the right-hand side, maybe correspond thing to this pixel. So just using tri triangularization, you will know the distance, right, the depth for that. So in, I mean, in theory, as long as you can find the correspondence of each of the, I mean, 3D points uh, in the space, that projected on the left left side and the right side the cross the bonding pixels, then you can basically compute the half the three D model of the entire things. Let's say one application can be like this. And we also mentioned if we know the fundamental matrix, instead of searching just um let's say for this let's say this pixel is here instead of like searching the entire left side image, we can just search along one line, that basically an epipolar line. The epipolar line is basically just equal to the fundamental matrix multiplied by this point here. Um, but of course, like, then we, we mentioned if, if we want to find the fundamental matrix, we would need to find some corresponding points like, on left side and right side. So that, therefore, it's basically a chicken and egg problem. So if you don't know the fundamental matrix, then you cannot basically take advantage of that. And without the fundamental matrix, you basically need to search for all the points on the space. And more importantly, you have many of these pixels in the space that is impo basically simply impossible to find correspondence, right? For example, inside this stop sign here, maybe you can imagine like, okay, I, I probably will be able to find, let's say, the T here, like the, maybe the upper left, or upper white uh, corner of the T here, the correspondence like, on this side is here. But there's no way I say like some point here like entirely smooth. I, w I just want to ask you like what is that point in the correspondence on this image? I mean, you roughly know that it's here just because you know that like, okay, the, the sign is like this. And, but in general, like it's, for example, like if I just point in the sky, like one point here, there's no way you can find the correspondence because I just there's no characteristics on that uh, pixel. So <clears throat> therefore, like uh, basically, like it's not it's not all points you can find the correspondence. Therefore, like those points that is easy easily able to find correspondence, we typically call it like uh, some key points or like future points and so on. Um, and uh, so, as I mentioned, like, those feature points will be useful to, say, compute the fundamental matrix. Once we know the key points, I say this is correspond to this, this correspond to this, and so on, then we can use that to compute uh, fundamental matrix as we, we discussed last time. And uh, of course, I, uh, in, in theory, like, it would be helpful to do structure of motion also. Um, but of course, like for that, we need to have a dense correspondence. Like for each of the pixels in the space, you want to find the 
correspondence. So, um, and uh, so uh, there will be like lots of applications. I just getting these feature points. I'm trying to uh, um, use them for, let's say we can use them for image alignment. So like just if we assume the object is pretty widget, like kind of like a widget object, then we probably don't need to have all the lots of points to find the correspondence. We, we just need, for example, if I know it's a building there, maybe I just need uh, four or five points I, I can uh, and completely align one of the building with the another building. And as I mentioned, it can be used for VD construction, reconstruction, and uh, motion checking, and module recognition, and so on and so forth. Um, so, so um, as I mentioned, like not all pawns will be can be like these key pawns or like feature pawns. So we want those pawns to be like uh, kind of invariant, locally kind of invariant. So have some nice characteristics. So that basically is saying that like it shouldn't be on a smooth surface. Um, and um, and hopefully also like um, I, okay actually I I, I I'm. Uh, actually, I, I'm saying something else. Here is actually saying something else I want to say. Here, actually, I want to say is invariance is the feature. So after we de design the pawns there, like let's say I say this is the pawns I, I am interested in that I can compute the, uh, let's say this is a key pawn, I want to compute the feature. What I want to say like in another image, let's say another view here, I have this is also a key pawn. I mean, the same, basically same pawns in the space there. Um, but apparently, it looks different, right? If you think of that as a rotation there, and you, and that's also like maybe bite less, the kind of like scale is like different. Like apparently, this is smaller now. So, if you want to kind of like um, represent this kind of keep on with some feature factor, so we want this factor that has certain an invariant property. So. No matter it's like this or like that, it's basically the vector will be hopefully kind of the same or similar. So um, that's that's the ultimate goal. But uh, for corner detector, um, well that actually we'll elaborate more the next time. But uh, today we basically uh, looking how corner detector will be one way to just find the interest point or right, these key points. So, um, and of course, another example uh, application would be for stitching. Like you, it's available in all the cameras nowadays. So, and basically, if you have two images here, you find find detect a bunch of key points, and then try to find the description or the features for those key points, and then just do a matching for all of them. So, um, therefore, like these key points, of course, we want that to be invariant, but at the same time, we we want to make sure that those um, key points should be uh, salient in the sense like it should be like for each key points, um, the feature is kind of distinct. Like you hope this point it will be distinct from let's say another point that is not exactly the same place there. Uh, but maybe it looks similar, so therefore it may be similar key points, but maybe this one will be kind of farther off from this one, let's say. And, and we want it to be repeatable so kind of like you change the view for different different scale and view, you're still able to find the same, I mean, uh, pick up the same key points there. And uh, hopefully like the features or the representation is like uh, kind of efficient and compact. Like you, you don't, I mean, you don't want to have a key point. The, the feature is like, I mean, uh, 100,000, like, uh, vectors of a hundred thousand elements, let's say, um, <coughs> and uh, it should be local, lo a good locality in the sense that like you have the key point that um, will identify exactly at that point more or less. Like uh, you don't want to have okay this key point and then feature. If you shift a little bit, the key point is like it more or less the same. You hopefully like they they they. Uh, I mean. But even though these two are pretty close in distance, um, they should have like different features. So
So <coughs> as I mentioned this time, like just this class, this class, I mean, not this lecture we just talk about like finding the key points and uh, and um, actually this is one of the bad example. Right? If you you pick up key points here, these four key points and these four key points is totally different things, then there's no way we are able to match anything. Um, so I guess this is kind of repeating what we said. So I, I will just skip skip this. So we will go for the first simple idea. So it's basically a corner detector. So why we want to do corner? Because you think of that like fat region will not have any distinct characteristic, right? And you, you basically cannot find correspondence. Uh, even you cannot do it, you don't expect your computer will be able to do it. Actually, the same also, like if you just say for this patch, like for along this edge, basically is indistinguishable, right? So, of course, I, I'm saying locally. If not seeing like other region of, if just look at this patch here, this patch here will be the same, more or less the same as this patch here. But on the other hand, the corner will be quite distinguishable. Eh? So therefore, we first I, at least the first idea will, for looking for key points will be simply look for corners. Um, so then now let's go into something a little bit technical. The idea is pretty simple. So uh, basically, uh, think of like I is the image here. Now, if we kind of um, shift the image a little bit by U and V, and look at the difference there. So if the face is flat, let's say if it's flat, then this, I, no matter how I shift it, like assume U and V is kind of small. So this value would be basically is equal to zero. Right? So, and or like if you think of its edges, so that may be a, it's a horizontal or vertical address. Then if I, let's say it's a vertical address, like, 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 like this one here. Then if I shift along the vertical axis, and don't shift, I mean set U to zero, just shift along V, then again this value will be equal to zero. Right? So only when you are in near the corner, or something like, like here, so no matter you shift U or shift V or a combination of them, you will have like value is a kind of non-zero here. And, uh, and, and, and therefore, like just think of like looking at like different combination of shift of U and V and think of like that as a function. This should give you some characteristics or like uh, to distinguish whether the object is a it's a pawn, or it's a, it's a corner, it's an edge, or like it's a, on a so smooth surface. Um, and here, this WXY here, just at the windows here, kind of smooth things out. So, and of course, I uh, use shift, we want to, what I mean is, uh, if you, you sh what I mean, if you start with a patch here, let's say I, I look at this entire patch, I shift by a little bit here, uh, uh, Okay, let me just so basically we are generating a function like this. So a function will be a 2D function with argument u and v. We start with one patch here, right? And then I will shift by let's say u equal to zero, uh, u equal to one, then that means I shift to the right by one pixel or right? something like that. And I may shift and then I will just um, look at the difference between now the new patch with the old patch here, right? and I'm just some them, some all of them out, and maybe also like do a weighted sum on that because the weighted sum just for the effects that like we want to uh, kind of like soften the boundary effect. Basically, like we we, we will have have a kind of uh, weighted sum with a filter that is have large value in this near the center of the patch and kind of like slowly decay near the boundary. So, and then I, I this is u equal to one, and I can do u, u equal to two, I sh shift even a bit more, something like that. 
and then I, I have u equal to three and so on, but this is u equal to one, two, three, four, v equal to zero, and I can have like different uv combination, and then we'll have an entire function basically. So, and, and this is our entire function, and we, we basically use this, use this function to figure out whether it's a, a corner or uh, an edge or like a surface. So as I mentioned, we have this window, window function here, just smooth out the boundary effect. Of course, we can just use, use this window function, just a something like a, uh, what's that called? I mean, a step function, that, that would be not very nice. So we'll have like strong boundary effect. So or like we can smooth, smooth that out with like Gaussian, for example. And uh, so I, I just give a caveat here, like, this is typical what people write, but uh, be careful. It is actually a little bit sloppy notation because you think of that this W depends on like where you are the center. Um, basically, the a more rigorous notation may may be like that. Be, uh, for each of the pixel you're interested in, because I you're interested in different patch region of the patch, right? So then the window should be like center around this this center also. So what I mean is like, we, we are writing in a sense like same W everywhere, but what the W is kind of center, of course like center around the point of interest that you're computing the, um, um, yeah, whether it's a, uh, the characteristic, whether that is an edge or like fat region or a corner. So but that, that's, that's just a minor notation thing. So, and that, that's basically just to check your understanding now. So what do you expect the, if I have a point here, here, and here, what do you, do, what do you think you, E, U, V is supposed to be? Yes. That the, uh, the first one is uh, which one? Uh, yes. I suspect that the, uh, the middle image yes. is that corner of the house right there. Uh, you mean here, here, here? Yes, yeah. yes, that's good. Yeah, it's it's more like an edge. Uh, like yeah, yeah this edge. is an edge. Yeah, yes. Edge. So th this this is right. Yes, this is actually here. Yes. And so I guess you, you, you can guess pretty well for the other two also. So this uh, is more uh, kind of, um, what should I say, texture things is probably something like more like, like a corner should be correspond to here. Right. As, and, and this one is kind of sm smoothing out like this is like, uh, this doesn't look like that, but it's like more or less COFU, right? Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like this is less smoothing here, should be something like that. So everything, uh, okay. So everyone is good with that. So um, now with this EUV, now we, we try to see like, okay, we, we know what it looks like, right? So we, we expect this will be like something like corner. So this is something we are interested in therefore. So if it's flat, we don't like it. So the, the question now is like, how to figure out from this EUV um, knows that whether it's like it's kind of like a deep or like it's actually kind of like an edge like here or like it's a flat uh, function like this one. So um, uh, okay. So yeah, uh, uh, yeah. That that's another thing is like. 
if we compute this kind of brute force, then it's a little bit, um, quite a bit of computation. So in practice, uh, we may speed that up like with some uh, Taylor series approximation. So as you know from the calculus, so like for example, in 1D function, you can uh, approximate a 1D, uh, let's say, if I have a value, if I have a function, whatever function, if I know the value like here, this is let's say, uh, let's say some, some uh, I draw so ugly. Maybe I call somewhere here is A, and then I, I have a point here, its interest is X here, and I can expand around this A here, basically it would be like, first, uh, I've, um, I mean the height here would be like F A plus basically, uh, the slope multiplied by, so this is kind of like approximately like x minus a or something <laughs> like that, and then the slope will be like f pi x f i a at here. So I have something like that, like that's first order approximation. Then we can go further, like in second order and so on. Then we we have this high order terms, right? So um. Now, what we can do is uh, we can approximate that, like just let's say first order approximation. So the i x u v, assume, assuming u v is kind of small, so I will just expand that like this here, right? And then uh, this i x and i y will be just the uh, uh, partial derivative along the x axis and the y axis. Now, if we do that, then we can substitute this back to the equation, right? So we substitute that back to the equation. So some of the terms will get canceled, right? This will get canceled. So, and, uh, so we only have this thing left here. And then we take square root here. So, okay, now we, we kind of need to be careful what we are looking at now. Let's see. Ix, what's the dimension of Ix? Oh, wait a sec, actually, this may be a really silly question, but still, let, let's answer that. <laughs> what's the dimension of Ix? Uh, Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, because, ah, oh, okay. Yeah, even I, I think, is that two or something? No, no, it's just one, actually. But anyway, so then uh, I, I can actually, okay, be careful. This UV, I uh, always actually just one D here, just scalar. But I can write this now into like I, X, I, Y, U, V, that kind of form, right? So like this, I can multiply, write it as a matrix form. And then I, will be something like, oh, this is so bad. Let me just erase this writing now. So we, I can write it like this. So basically, I one of them, these two is basically the same, right? Both of them are scalar. But if I write it this way, then it's kind of nice, right? Then the, the, the one in the center, I can pull this UV outside, right? And I only have this left in the inside. And this inside is basically a matrix. And my matrix, I can call it M. So now I, uh, I approximate this function in, into a quadratic form, basically. I, I uh, approximate that um, by, by a kind of uh, hyperbola of stuff like that, like 2D, I don't know what's that called, like ellipsoid? Not exactly. Ellipsoid would be more than 2D, right? It, it's like a, hmm, I don't know what, but um, let's see if I have a shape here. So um, anyway, it would be something like that, right? So we approximate this with this here, and M is basically just this thing here. Now then, uh, things getting more interesting mathematically. <laughs> uh, then again, like this is time that you, you find linear algebra is useful. What you learn in linear algebra is useful again. Uh, so how, how do we distinguish like it's a corner or like a an edge or like something like that? Now you, you think of, okay, think, think let, let, let's do some sketch first. Let, let's go back to here and think a little bit. 
Um, so what we have this matrix M multiplied by this U V here. And of course, I guess this M with different values, I have a different function like that. Okay, first thing, first like this is a, a let's say a function U V here. So it's like a two D function, right? So it's like on a, you 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 have two D something like 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 this kind of function like that. And I have a U V S as a U V like like let's say I cannot do this. This is a three dimensional kind. Of, I, I I don't know. I'm not good at drawing. Um. And uh, so now think of like how how this I want this is like a big deep way I want if it's a corner then this hopefully will be kind of sharp way then will be more like a corner and if in an edge then maybe like in one axis or like in one direction this will be kind of uh, maybe in the v di direction this is a kind of uh, change more slowly but in the u direction. If I change much sharply, then this will be like an edge along the v direction. So this is a v, this is u. I'm not sure you can visualize this. So basically, like kind of like like this. So and, and if if flat, then then basically it will be like just flat, right? So what what okay? Flat is easy to visualize. When will it be flat? When M is kind of small everywhere, then it will be kind of flat, right? Um, and uh, also, like, most important, also, like, um, this, uh, when I join this here, I'm already assuming that, like, the for example, if we think of edges, I'm already thinking the edge is aligned with one of the UV axis. But in general, like this edge can be aligned, not not aligned with the UV axis, right? And when that is the case, then basically, like actually, what I want to say, when it's is aligned with the UV axis, what we will see is that this M matrix actually will be diagonal. And when it's not aligned, we will have something like it's not diagonal so we have the off diagonal have some some non zero value as well um, so maybe maybe let's go back to the slide here so now let's let's uh, kind of try to slide this function uh, into different uh, different level and uh, so and let's say this function we remember this is f u v right let's set f u v for to be a constant and different levels and see like when I mean where, where we will cut out those levels for the function um, and now the linear algebra coming in so remember what we learn about like let's say eigenvalue and eigenvalues are like, linear algebra. So, so we have like let's say fine is the eigenvalue for m and lambda is the eigenvalues. So and this is a two D matrix where we only have two eigenvalues and two eigenvectors, right? So and uh, let's let's just skip it. So we we basically will have something like that. We will have these two eigenvectors. Uh, if I multiply them, I will equal to this. And I can write it this form. So, so in any ways, I yes, yes, we. So, okay. So, um, and, and we can use these eigenvectors to build a matrix to diagonalize that. Uh, diagonalize that uh, matrix M there. So, um, let's see if I can just go to the core here. Uh, and then okay, if we use the rotation matrix now, if I uh, we, if we after we kind of find the eigenvectors and use the eigenvectors to build this rotation matrix, now I can kind of change the coordinate way. Right? Essentially, what we did is I originally let's say we have the function. Let's say if I cut in a particular C level. 
that this is the function let's say f u v is equal to some particular value or constant c here so I can find out to kind of voltage this uh, the axis of u and v so then I get this new axis u pi and v pi let's say originally is u v here and my changes to u pi v pi here and this rotation basically is just the eigenvectors there and then now this eigenvalues so then after I change the axis as you can see then I can rewrite this as this one here right so basically R again is just the eigenvectors um, and uh, let's see and u pi v pi are the new coordinate it's like r multiplied by u v so that will be like under this new coordinate u pi and v pi and yeah basically under this new coordinate and then then what's what's going on is like we basically just rotate the things like along the axis of interest right uh, along this uh what they call like those major axes right a and now like under this axis we can say the the function now is simply like this right under this new coordinates u pi v pi we basically have just a simple ellipsoid or ellipse uh, ellipse equation it's a lambda 1 u pi square plus something like that lambda 2 u pi square where remember this lambda 1 and lambda 2 is coming from the eigenvalues here and I, I mentioned this is equal to constant. I can pick the constant is one here. It doesn't matter actually. But what, what I'm saying that if you look at this here, if lambda one is well, first first thing first, if lambda one and lambda two are very much different, like lambda one is bigger than much bigger than lambda two, which which uh, cases do we have? Which case do we have? It's an edge. It's an S. Uh, it's a a deep like a corner or it's a it's a fast surface. Oops, I, I'm quite sure I lost everyone. <laughs> so since when I lost everyone, I'm not. I'm. I'm, I'm um. So should I? Go back, maybe I, I should here, I should go more s slowly here. Um, so we, we, we have this equation, right? remember this is the FUV, we just approximate the FUV with this instead. And the M we computed as, um, as this matrix here, right? And these are just the partial derivative along X and Y at the point of interest. And, and then we can compute this M here. So what we are doing is that we just approximate this original FUV as a uh, elliptic function. And the elliptic function, uh, if I, I, in general, this function does not, does not align with the UV axis. What I mean is that I may have ellipsoid like that. But what I'm interested in is I want to kind of rotate the function, uh, uh, yeah, rotate the axis a little bit into here. And that would be simply, Actually, maybe we can. We, it would be simply like we have this m here, and we consider is eigenvector. Then it's basically I have m phi one phi two multiplied by that is equal to lambda one lambda two phi one phi two. Do you agree with that? Because like, this is just basically okay. M multiplied by lambda one. Is equal to lambda one multiplied by phi one m, m lambda two like that. So then you see that like I actually diagonalize this m matrix right now. I call this is a, a rotation matrix R here right. So I can move this on the other side right. Then then I diagonalize that. Now I replace I now I can substitute this. Now therefore I have basically let me write one more step. M equal to R. Uh, I call it S. Let's say R inverse something like that. 
then can substitute this back into here, right? So if I do that, then I have I ask R inverse times UV. Of course, our inverse is just equal untransposed because that is basically a functional matrix. And then like this has a like L, U, V, whatever, something like that. Now I can rename this thing like as a like U pi, V pi instead. So then become a new S as U pi, V pi, multiplied by this S matrix. S is actually just like composed of uh, the eigenvalues lambda 1 and L lambda 2 u pi v pi so u pi v pi is equal to some constant so but this linear algebra frame what we did is simply just do a rotation right trying to rotate align the uh, the major axis now my question is like uh, when I have lambda 1 is much bigger than lambda 2 stuff like that then what was the shape we expect to be it would be like a shape more like a very elongated like football right, or ellipsoid. So then in that case, it's more like the line that we have mentioned earlier, that it's more like an edge. So therefore, like, at least it's here, the lambda 1, if it's bigger, much bigger than lambda 2, or like the other way 1, will have like something like an edge. Now, how about lambda 1 and lambda 2 is small? So that means that the function doesn't change very quickly, right? Lambda one, lambda two, uh, is small. Then, then I say actually the value is kind of flat. Or the function is kind of flat, right? So therefore, it should correspond to the flat surface there. So and um, so therefore, like uh, we go for quite a bit this kind of stuff. But eventually, you just need to look in the look into the eigenvalues of that M matrix. So so this this is okay. This is not. Uh, Okay, this is, should go like that. So if if your your eigenvalues is like both eigenvalues is pretty big, then it should be like corner. If like one of them is much bigger, one of them is small, it will be like edge. If both of them is pretty small, then it will be flat uh, surface. So that that's that's how we find corners basically. So therefore, we just uh, try to compute the m function there, or uh, the or like the m matrix there, and then just try to decompose the eigenvalues and then like, find the eigenvalues like whether in this region here so therefore like this region is like corner the rest is like edge and so on and um, so then we, we can define some cornerless for this function so basically like we would like to have roughly speaking so it can, can, can be uh, specified with, by this function here. So when this is big, then this will be more or less in this region here. And we make it this way because say like, lambda one, lambda two, this product and this sum is easy. Is actually is re really the product is the the what's that called? The determinant of the yeah, I think it's the uh, determinant of the eigenvalues. Uh, sorry, uh, the, the matrix M. And this is basically the trace of the matrix M. So I can also like write it as this one here also. Um, so therefore, like this is actually basically the Harris corner detector. So we need to compute the M matrix for each win. I mean each windows, and then afterward, like we need to compute the C values. We actually don't need to don't really need to diagonalize or like compute the eigenvectors and eigenvalues because as you can see ultimately this c is also just equal to the determinant minus the trace square um, and uh, oh, by the way do you guys know what, what's the trace of like let's say a b c d the trace yes uh, there's, there's a called trace of a matrix yeah. Uh, uh, like the determinant, you mean? Uh, oh, determinant is something else. So, what is the determinant for this matrix? AD minus um, BC. Yes, so yes. AD minus CP. Yeah. AD minus CP or BC. Yes. Uh, 
Yes. And, and for the trace, actually, it's just some of the diagonal is the trace. Uh, and what's interesting about the trace also, like you have uh, the property that when you, you rotate the matrix, it doesn't change the trace values. So therefore, like, um, when you uh, when I try to diagonalize this matrix, rotate it, be, become a diagonal matrix, diag diagonal values is basically just the eigenvalues, right? So therefore, the trace of a matrix is also always equal to the sum of all the eigenvalues. Um, so, uh, and, and finally, like, after that, we can also do some uh, long maximum suppression because I, as, let me I, let me show you like let's say uh, if I just try to find the correspondence, like some of these corners will be pretty big, pretty like all this is like high C values. So we want to make sure this is really maximum. So what we can do is simply just look at the neighborhood of that con that point and just make sure it's like larger than all the neighborhoods. Then if we do that, like then this we have oh well, this is very hard to see, but these are, will be the corners as you can see here. Like that. Um, it here it explains something about invariance and covariance, covariance. But honestly, I need to read this, this definition to know what he is talking about. So let's see. Uh, this transform and corner location does not change. Okay, that is invariance. And if we have two transform version of the same image, features should be detected in the correspondent. Okay. Uh, I guess like, oh, okay. Uh, do I understand correctly? It looks like covariance is more, more, um, more, uh, more, what's that word, stricter condition, I guess. So we, we want that like the two transform image still have the same corresponding locations for that point. Um, okay, let, let, let uh, just a remark, like we, that's another like kind of detector called like Shi Tomashi detector. The difference is just use a different criteria to find this, I mean, for, for identify the corners. So it used the minimum of lambda one, lambda two instead of using this one here. So uh, actually I should go back to, I jump, I jump across this. I, I should really, uh, maybe I can. This, this is the entire procedure, just a summary for that. So we have the image, let's say this is the original image, let's say. And then we compute the derivative like along x and y axis. So it will be just the difference of two images, right? Actually, I'm thinking this will be your home uh, third homework. So maybe you guys want to pay attention. But also, I, I'm thinking I'll just put up the solution why it's now here. Okay, so cool. <laughs> uh, for the video, so you may go back to look at the video if you cannot solve that. So uh, I mean, um, so after you find this, uh, so the, the gradient here, so you can find now the square of the gradient and also the ixy be like take derivative two times. And to come, if you remember, uh, what's m there? m is basically similar that we have this w, I think we have the, some, some xy there, and then some i x plus u, y plus v minus i uh, x y or something like that. So we, we have a filter here, right? Something like, so that filter can be applied way away here. Just we apply filter of this image, of this gradient images. Then we have the filter there. And then the C values will be simply, um, because the determinant is just equal to the, uh, the, as you remember that if we have A, B, C, D, the determinant, it will be just A, B minus C, D, and this is basically A, a B minus C, D here. Um, 
yeah, because C and B is same value is equal to the filter of like I X Y, I X I Y. And then like the trace, as I mentioned, is just some of the diagonal, so it's like some of A and B. And with that, then we pick the threshold there and then use the lo maximum suppression. So, um, and let's see, uh, I think I should have somewhere here. Well, actually, we, we are quite early, so I, I, it's okay. I guess we'll just leave early then. Yeah, I don't have anything to say. I didn't look at the clock. I should go s slower. Um, where's my... Uh, where's, uh, oh, here, here. So, um... Here's an example that uh, this is actually written in MATLAB. I, I, I have a, uh, I put it in Jupyter and have a MATLAB kernel here. So uh, this I low an image, I kind of resize that, and I change it to gray. Um, oh, it's slow. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, the same image you saw before. Now this this is basically the gradient, right? I just do it like in the sense, the simplest thing. So I just do do a difference of like shift the difference, and shift the, um, uh, I I I shift it by one one pixel basically. <coughs> As you can see, I basically for the for the uh, for example, like if I have like three pixels here, the gradient of this pixel I use this subtract by this, something like that. Um, of course, you can do some other way. It doesn't matter. I just, uh, it's, it seems to work well, and it's kind of simple to me. And I change to, to double, and then I do a filter for this IXY. Um, and you, kind of this sigma, you can pay any sigma, I guess. Not, not any, but you can play around that a little bit. Alpha, remember that's basically you have this, uh, the determinant minus alpha times uh, the trace here, the alpha, it, it, it can't recommend that it's something like 0 0.05, so I use that. So then, um, and then I need to find a threshold for the C value. So this threshold is kind of adaptive. So we just find the largest C, and then I say like everything, everything larger than one percent of the largest C, I would say is like like the corner. So then basically, you you see here, I just have the original image. This is kind of uh, just for visualization, really. So. Um, this is the original image. I split it into the RGB plane, and then I change a little bit on the orange of the plane whenever the uh, the corner that pixel there is bigger than the threshold. I'll set the red component to maximum and other components to smallest value. Then I just put them back. So I have this one here. So it's like a bunch of just have this uh, C values that. Whenever it's larger than like one percent, then it's all showing what. Then uh, we can do a measurement suppression here. So um, basically, again, I do something pretty simple. So I just uh, but but I vectorize a little bit, so make it a little bit quicker. So let's see what I what, what I'm writing. Um, Okay, yeah, I think the M, M is a mask here. So it's like everything for C is like bigger than fast forward, I, I put a mask. So therefore M is equal to one uh, whenever C is bigger than the fast forward. Then, uh, then I just like get all the, um, okay, this 10 M is now another mask, right? That's when, when the curve values basically 
is larger than the value on the left, then this time must will be equal to one, otherwise will be equal to zero. So I make a dot product for that, I will just exclude anything that like on the left is bigger than the current value, right? So then I repeat this the same thing basically like whenever it's uh, uh, the for example like on the white is bigger than the m myself then I will just exclude that when I say it's above is bigger than myself I, yeah I will exclude that and so on so then uh, then the mask will be updated uh, again this repeating what we have earlier just to visualize that and then um, this is very hard to see because it's just a tiny dot here. So you can see like dots here. These are the identified corners, basically some corners here and stuff like that. Or maybe there's some here also. So, um, yeah, I guess like, uh, so maybe I'll ask you guys to implement that. Uh, of course, I already see the solution now. Uh, <laughs> So maybe it's more like I will ask you guys to type it out or something. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> just try it out. Um, so uh, I have time. Let me just have like last. I just have stop early, but I will show you also like an open CV version. So of course, if open CV, I don't I don't really try to re-implement the corner detector. I just um, use the OpenSea library here. So let's see. So basically, oh, okay. I just want to hide myself. Hat, okay. So uh, kind of doing okay, right? So it, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, actually, you see that like, it's very quick. Like, this kind of corner detector is very quick. Like, it doesn't, yeah. You can do exact. Uh, you can use this kind of stuff definitely real time, and uh, let's see. Maybe maybe play a little bit with that. So as you can see here, I have what I am doing is basically after I capture the frame, then I change the grayscale here. Now I use the house color detector. It has some options here. Well, I have say box size and the aperture size here. I, I forgot like what this box size and aperture size means. Uh, you need to take up the, I assume it's like the, the um, size of the patch and also like, uh, I, I forgot which is which, you need to take up the, but K is pretty certain, K is basically the alpha there. That's the determinant minus the alpha times the trace square so um so we, we can try to, okay k let's say k is um and, and of course like, that's also a factor here so this will basically just compute the corner values where right? i have uh, let's see i have these corner values here but basic because dsc is the c values now uh, oh, actually, this probably this line should go after that. It makes more sense. But uh, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. So this, this I, I, I just make this bigger so it's uh, easier to see. But he actually did the first one, right? So the first hole is like 0 0.01. So if I increase that, like sh should I have like more or less corner detected? So if I have 0 0.05, do you expect more corners or less corner detected? Uh, you increase the threshold or decrease the threshold? Uh, decrease. So from 0 0.01 to 0 0.05, 0 0.05. More corners, right? So let's see. I don't know whether it's more or less. Or I guess it's exaggerated a little bit more. Uh, anyway, so maybe I, I can make it really small. See what happens. Wow. Yeah. That's that's definitely lots of yeah. This is dope. 
version? Yeah, I can use this, the open C version, yeah. But I will ask you to actually implement the <laughs> corner detector. I, I guess it's, it's really, um, I mean, it's actually easy. As you can see, even the MATLAB, I implement the whole thing. It's just a couple box of, of lines. And of course, you also see the solution already. <laughs> and this is actually a screencast. So you can go back to see the solution again. Uh, <laughs> So, um, so, but, but I, I would just like you guys to type it. But maybe the next, next next homework could be more difficult than that. I, I don't know. I can't promise any, I, every time it's so easy. <laughs> so, um, but, um, but, yes. Okay, so this is screen can you go back to <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you didn't realize that, like, because one of the girls, I guess it's Sylvia, uh, the first class, she said that like, she said she, she's working in Baker's Hill and she cannot come all the time, so she asks whether I can televise or like maybe video, make a video of that. And I said televise would be really difficult, right? Or they televise into Tulsa. So I guess video taping, like, I, I can do that. I can screencast, but uh, just, I can promise like, this, this time, for example, like if I want something really heavy, like demo, like sometimes you will just drop frames and like, maybe even the whole thing screw up. So, but I, I try to like, keep this, because as I mentioned, like, this is actually very nice. Uh, because you go back like next year, for example, like I always don't remember what I talked about <laughs> last time. <laughs> so I can just go back and take a look. Oh, okay, it's, okay, it's that. Okay, I, now I know. So I don't really, uh, it's much easier to prepare. So it's good for me also. Uh, so anyway, I guess I will be a bit early, but maybe we just